Hi friends, this is Teacher Rocio and this book is called One Plastic Bag by Satu Sise and the Recycling Women of the Gambia. Written by Miranda Paul. She's a writer, she's the author, and illustrated illustrated by Elizabeth Zunon. She's the illustrator. She's the one who did the art. And this book is very different from every other book. This book is, uses collage, uses uh, paper, plastic. They did these, these, these drawings by drawing and gluing and pasting which make it so cute. One plastic bag. Look at all those plas wet plastic bags. One plastic bag by Isatu Sese and the Recycling Women of the Gambia. Nijao, Gambia. Isatu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket, and her neck stings with every step. Warm scent of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. Oh, the basket tips, one fruit tumbles, then two fruit, then 10. The basket breaks, Isatu kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag, flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isatu slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers that it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruit in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Why do you think it will mix back in with the dirt? Remember what mixes in with the dirt is compost. So it has to be something made out of nature, like pieces of leaves, peels of fruit. What do, what do um, our worms, remember our worms? Yes, that's why it will turn back to dirt because it's made out of hay, straw. Four goats greet Isatu as grandmother Mbombe emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry, hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful Mbomba. Isato scurries in, and grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Mmm. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isato confesses. But I found this. Plastic? Grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. Day after day, Isatu watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water and wanjo from tiny hole poked in clear bags. Market trays fill with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful. She thinks. She swings her bags high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes. Then two. Then ten. 
Isatu sh shakes sand off her paper. Another plastic bag floats by and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. <gasps> so she's not throwing it in the trash? Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then 10, then 100. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path, and the thought floats away. Years pass, and Isatu grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isatu hears a goat crying and hurries toward grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides and the animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have passed. Grandmother Mamumbe's powerful shoulders sag. Isatu must be strong and do something. But what? Why are all the goats getting sick? Do you know why? Isatu's feet lead her to the old ugly road. A pile of garbage stand as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose, her feet back away. Goats scamper past, they forage through the trash for food. Her feet stop. She knows too much to ignore now. Holding her breath, <gasps> she plucks one plastic bag from the pile, then two, then ten, then hundred. What can we do? Isatu asked her friends. Let's wash them, said Fatim, pulling out almost soap. Maram grabs a bucket and Incha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the wash bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isatu watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Well, look, she's crocheting with needle and thread. Wow, yes, her sister shows Isatu the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isatu's fingers busy themselves in and out around. Jeff, thank you. Isatu finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isatu pauses. She and Peggy have an idea. But will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. So she's got scissors. She's cutting the bags. She's cutting them into little lines. Then she wraps them around her hand. And then with the wood, she made a needle out of wood. One friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The woman cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. 
before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. What kind of thread? Plastic bag thread. That's right. Nakalige bi? Asked grandmother. It means, how is the work? Ndanka, ndanka, answers Isatu. Slow. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty. Why dirty? We wash the bags. But I believe what we are doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight away from those who mock them. The word mock means people making fun. Mocking is not very nice. Nobody likes to be mocked. Nobody likes to be to make fun of. Until a morning comes when they will no longer work in a secret. What do they make with the plastic bags? Fingers are sore and blistered. Isatu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten, then... One woman lays the lassi coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend, then two, then ten. Soon everyone wants one. What do the ladies want? A purse. Isatu fills her own purse with the lassi, which is coins, money. She zips it, shuts, and rides home to tell grandmother she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now. She tells herself one day it will be all gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day it was. Look at the goats, they're all happy. Look at her baby, he got so big. And look at the ground. She made a garden instead of the big pile of trash. That is wonderful. See, Isatu, she's from Africa. That's a continent. We live in North America. The end. This is a real story, okay? This is not make-believe or fantasy story. This is a real story of Isatu. And that's Isatu right there with her baby and her with her arms raised, feeling so proud of herself for keeping our Mother Earth nice and clean. Thank you, Isatu, for all your help. The end. What did you think about the story? Draw me a picture. I would love to see your beautiful art. Tell me what you think of the story and tell me how you can help clean the earth. This, this is a, something that Isatu said. She's, it's a quote called the quote when somebody says something very important and that somebody else uses the words, says, people thought I was too young and that women couldn't be leaders. I took these things as challenges. They gave me more power. I didn't call out the problem. I called out the solution. Remember, when we have, when there's an issue, that you need to solve, always look for solutions. If there, you can't think of a solution, there's always people you could ask 
for their ideas on how to solve, okay? Thank you. Bye, friends.